Okay, welcome everybody and thank you for joining this virtual session. My name is Radoslav Dimitrov and I'm here with Ivana Atanasova and we're both part of VMware's Open Source Technology Center. Today, we're going to talk about a project called Network Service Mesh. Hello. Looking for a good point to start from, let's talk about the technology evolution through the years. First, we had those monolithic applications running on bare metal machines. Then the VM wave came out and we started migrating our workloads to virtual machines. We did that for benefits like reduced operational costs, faster provisioning, improved efficiency, and much more. Now it's all about containers and microservices. Here, projects like Docker and Kubernetes are becoming the standard for such systems. Of course, this maps perfectly in use cases that allow rapid and fast adoption of new technologies. But let's see how this looks like through the eyes of a telco. So apparently, telcos are moving a bit slower, but that's not always bad. Due to their nature, they prefer to use only well-established technologies in their systems. So for example, this is how a typical telco system evolved through the years. Initially, telco consisted of lots of physical boxes, each and every one implementing a specific network function within that system. Then they decided to adopt virtualization. So all those physical boxes were migrated to virtual machines. This introduced the concept called virtual network functions or VNFs. And it pretty much changed the way networking was done for the last couple of decades. And it is known as the first wave of NMV. Now, telcos are looking again at the enterprise to leverage the benefits of the cloud native world. And for example, adopt technologies like Kubernetes and Docker in their systems. This introduces a new concept called cloud native network functions or CNFs. At some point, the end goal would be to have a mixed setup of network functions, meaning that bare metal machines, virtual machines, and containers live as a single entity. Network Service Mesh is a project that aims to be part of that transition. Let's talk about what is a network service. Imagine there is an application and that it runs in the public cloud. It needs to connect to another cloud or to a corporate intranet in order to consume some custom service that is exposed. And this uh, opens a problem because usually the application takes care of implementing the connection logic. And the app doesn't actually want to know about that. Why? For example, what if the connection changes and what if we have multiple applications? In that case, we would need to update each of, that, of them in order to apply those connection changes. And we need to do that every time when there's such change. We can agree that this is not very efficient. So what we can do instead, we can offer that to a network service that provides such functionality. In this case, we have client uh, that requests a network service we have endpoints that implement a network service and the communication between them happens through wires that are payload agnostic. All these components form the concept of network service mesh. So what is network service mesh? It is an infrastructure layer for managing layer two and layer three service to service communication. It provides on demand and negotiated point to point connections and it exposes a gRPC API through which you can publish and consume network services. And finally, the great thing is that all of that happens without any changes to Kubernetes or the underlying CNI network. Let's see how we can describe the previous example of a network service in a simple YAML file. We need to specify a payload type, for example, an IP. We need source and destination selection. In our example, the client was connecting through a firewall and then through the VPN gateway. So in our YAML file, the default match is going to the firewall and then it goes through the VPN gateway. 
This way of service definition makes it possible to chain multiple clients or endpoints and to create the so-called service composition. This allows us to describe uh, the topology that serves our needs. How this example looks like in typical Kubernetes deployment. We have Kubernetes, we have network service mesh deployed on top, and we have three pods to running, one client and two endpoints. What happens? First, the endpoints announce themselves to network service mesh. Then the client requests a network service from network service mesh. Finally, NSM takes care of creating the necessary connections. It injects network interfaces to all of the pods and it creates a communication tunnel between them and this creates the connection. Again, a great thing here is that all this happens without any changes to the underlying CNI. The CNI is great enough, so why to change now, let's zoom a little and see how network service mesh works in more details. So how it works. NSM consists of two main building blocks. It has a manager and a forwarding plane. The two live on every node, but have different responsibilities. We also use the Kates API as a registry for our network services. The manager is responsible for negotiating the connection details and to make sure that the job will be done and everything is okay. Once we have set that details, then we need someone to actually do the work right. Well, that someone is the forwarding plane. Now let's see how a connection request looks like. We start by deploying our network service via the YAML file from before. Once our endpoint is started, it announces itself to its local manager that then saves that information inside the registry. On the other side, we have a client that wants to consume our network service. It requests it from its local manager that seeks for information about that network service inside the registry. Once it finds out which is the manager responsible for that network service, the two managers start to negotiate the connection details. Once this is completed, they feed that information down to the forwarding place. Then it's up to them to create the communication tunnel between the two nodes, create the necessary interfaces and inject them inside the pods and thus complete the connection between the client and the firewall. Now let's have a more telco oriented example. In this case, we're going to recreate the topology of a 4G LTE network using network service mesh. Now let's see how a standard 4G network looks like. First, we have the user equipment, which are the devices that use that network. Stuff like phones, cars, IoT devices, and so on. Then we have the radio access network, which, which are basically lots of antennas or base stations. Then we have the evolved packet core network or EPC, which are a set of components, each responsible for different service within that system. For example, stuff like user authentication, charging, gateways that manage quality of service and so on. The output then goes to the data network, for example, the internet. In this talk, we're going to focus on that box in the middle and recreate the network topology for the packet core network. So let's see how to do that using network service mesh. First, we decide that each component is going to be a different pod within Kubernetes. Now that we have a bunch of pods we want to connect, we need to decide how to map that to network service mesh. Although we can have a pod that is both client and endpoint, to simplify it, we'll create a setup in such a way that a single pod is either a client or an endpoint. Considering that, the end result looks like the following. For example, we chose MME to be an endpoint and HSS to be a client. Once we have covered that, then we need to describe the topology in the network service YAML file. As we said before, it consists of a set of matches and each match have a source selector and a destination selector. 
This means that if a request is coming with a label matching the source selector, we should put it for an endpoint with a label from the destination selector. For example, S6A is our source selector, which is a label coming from the HSS client, and MME is our destination selector, which is the label advertised by the MME endpoint. We complete describing the whole topology using that same approach for each connection. So let's see how the Kate's YAML files looks like for both endpoint and the client. For the endpoint, we specify the network service it belongs to. In this case, this is 4G network. Then we specify the endpoint label we'll advertise from this endpoint. In this case, this is MME. For the client, we want to say which network service it wants to consume, right? To do so, we specify the network service and the label we're going to advertise as a client. In our case, this is 4G network and S6A. Now let's see the actual demo of the 4G network topology example. We will be using network service mesh with Kubernetes. So we have a simple Kubernetes deployment. We have two nodes cluster, there's nothing fancy in it. Then we deploy network service mesh infrastructure using Helm. We will wait for a while until the deployment is done and until all the pods are available and are ready. So once, there, once the deployment is completed, we can see that there are two NSM managers and there are two forwarding planes, each of them for each node of the cluster, as we showed in the previous in the examples. Then we proceed by deploying the YAML files that we created earlier. After that, we can see that each client and endpoint are being deployed. Here are all the components that we already showed in the example. Once this is done and once all the pods are ready, this completes deploying the 4G network topology that we described in the YAML file. This means that all the necessary interfaces and connections were created, created by the forwarding planes and that all the components can communicate with each other. But we now need to verify that. So that we have everything deployed, we need to make sure that it is created as we want it to be. For that reason, we have a script that verifies the connections between each client and endpoint. The, the script loops through all the clients and it pings the corresponding end from, uh, endpoint for that client. We can see the successful pings from the output and we can also see the endpoint and client port names in the same output. So what else can we do? We can use a dashboard like Skydive to better visualize our deployment. And what do we see? We see our two worker nodes being there and we can see the pods that live on each node. We can see the clients and we can see the endpoints. For each pod, we can see the containers that live inside it and the available network interfaces it has. A good thing that we can visualize here is that we can see the pod to pod connections that are created by network service mesh. We can also see some specific information for each interface, stuff like type, state, address, and even its metrics. And this is available for both NSM and CNI created interfaces. With that, we can see that having a dashboard like Skydive presents a pretty neat way to better understand your deployment and visualize it in a nice and simple manner. With that example, we showcase that NSM makes it possible to have flexible and dynamically defined infrastructure using a simple API. This is something really important for use cases such as Telco. Another thing to share is that we are also actively involved in the CNCF CNF testbed. For those of you that don't know about it, this is an initiative to evaluate how CNF architectures compare to the more traditional VNF ones. There are two, already there are two network service mesh 
based use cases that are present there. And there is an ongoing work by Ericsson to provide uh, a network separation use case. What's next with the project? We have an ongoing multi-repo refactoring that will improve the project structure. We have a Kubernetes operator for deploying and managing network service mesh. There are also very interesting contributions in the forwarding plane context. We have, uh, we, are, we are working um, on support for multiple simultaneous forwarders. Also, Ericsson are working on a forwarder with hardware offloading to smart mix, and this will deliver a PCI pass-through performance for clients and endpoints in the context of network service mesh. And this will also deliver no host CPU consumed compared to DPDK. We are also working on an SROV forwarder. And for those of you that are interested, there will be a sem seminar covering how network service mesh can address the networking challenges that cloud native telco applications face in 5G. There will be details and proof of concept on how network service mesh decouples the infrastructure from applications. And the speakers will also give an update on, of the network separation use case that is ongoing in the CNF testbed. So the takeaway that we see here is that telco operators and service providers are actively looking at the cloud native world to build their next generation solutions. Meaning that containers and all that ecosystem of projects around them will be the next building blocks for that. Projects like Network Service Mesh aim to provide features that will help to create those future systems and at the end be part of that transition. And with that, I believe we've covered all of the slides for this talk. We'd like to say thank you again for attending our virtual session at KubeCon Europe. We hope everyone enjoyed it and got some value out of it. Thank you. Thank you. And we are also open for questions from the audience.